Total failure. A nice gooey cheese. It looks pretty good. Bailey. A 4.6 star rating in Amazon's choice. You know what I think about that? Well, now hold on there, partner. Welcome back, everybody. Now, I've reviewed a lot of pots and pans over the years, but never one that doesn't require a kitchen. That's right, today I've got the Dezen Multifunction Electric Hot Pot. It's a nonstick cooker that can be used anywhere that you have power. I picked this one up back on Black Friday for 30 bucks, and I just checked, and it's still 30 bucks, so maybe it wasn't that great of a deal anyways. But let's crack this open and see how it works. There's what we got inside. Starting with an important notice and some instructions. We have a glass lid. A really small spatula. In fact, I was looking for a small spatula, so this could be uh, perfect for my kitchen. Power cable. I actually thought that was a chess piece for a second, and this looks like some sort of an egg gadget as well. Look at the quality. It's, it's not bad. It's a little bit cheap feeling. We've got a dial here with off 250 watts and 600 watts, so kind of a low and a high. Inside the pot itself is a warning not to use steel to clean it off with. Now, I was noticing on Amazon, some of the models have a steaming basket. I guess I don't have one. I guess I got the model that doesn't have it. And these instructions are kind of small, and I can already tell they're not going to be very thorough. So what I'm going to do first is wash this off, read over the instructions, and then we'll get started. All right, I washed it off, read over the instructions. The instructions aren't very good, by the way. Now it's time to fire it up. All right, one thing I can already tell this, someone in the comments said they didn't like the placement of the cord. I can already tell, look, it's kind of pulling it off the table. That's not good. And it's also kind of weighing it down. I'm not a fan of that, but we'll work with it. I don't know if the bottom's gonna get hot, so I'm gonna put it on a trivet anyways, just to be safe. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just fire this up and see how, how hot it gets. Let's turn this on, we'll go 250. See how fast it actually, oh, it's warming up quickly. Warming up quickly. Keep an eye on that number on the top right hand side that says 152 right now. That's the hottest temperature on the screen. It looks like it's not totally even. It's kind of a C shape on, on the heating element. Keep in mind, this is the low 250 watt setting. So we'll see how warm it gets. My other question is, does the, the handle or the bottom get warm? Let's check that out. Uh, right now, it doesn't look too, too warm at all, really. Handle's not looking warm either. We'll check back in a little bit after it's warmed up, but you can see it's evening out just a little bit, but we'll keep an eye on this. Right now we're in the three, uh, 350 range but it's still slowly increasing. We're still on low and it's in the 430s and still increasing. I'm guessing it's gonna to get to around 450. Uh, that seems like a nice round number. Will it get there and stop? It's gonna keep going. Now, oh, it just hit, I just heard it click off, so it's gonna probably start decreasing now. As it's warming up, there's that typical brand new appliance smell to it, which is never pleasant, but hopefully it only lasts for the first time. And, and the bottom, the bottom's a little bit warm. Okay, we got some, we got some warmth there but it's only 88 degrees so so this part's still relatively cool i mean it's warm but it's it's certainly you can touch this so it looks like there's not a lot of heat transfer to the bottom of it all right i've cooled this off let's go up to 600 watts now and see how it looks and once again we're off to a quick start we are already in the 200s we just sailed past 450 sailed past it 500 do i hear 600 all right it's Okay, it looks like around 540 it just it just clicked off and now it's going back down a little bit so and even down a little bit too so there's your answer. We'll see how long it takes to boil 16 ounces of water after heating up already. So it really it looks like the bottom is only just over 100 degrees. So, I mean, we have a lot warmer temperature than that here in Vegas. So that doesn't seem too warm at all. Let's see. Oh yeah, it's not too bad yet. And we're already starting to see some, some bubbles forming in the bottom. So I, it seems pretty effective. And you can see that pattern there reflects what I saw on the thermal imager where it has that C shaped where this side isn't quite as warm as this side is. And once again, we are on the 600 watt setting. That looks like some, some rogue planet that's, uh, that the James Webb telescope's filming, doesn't it? But it also looks like there is one side's warmer than the other. The bottom is staying pretty cool to touch, so I'm, I'm kind of happy and surprised about that. So I was worried it might be really hot on the bottom. It's not, as you can see, I'm touching it. And the water is almost boiling. At the uh, three and a half minute mark, we already, it looks like we're, uh, we're getting there. Not bad results, really. I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. So let's move on to an actual cooking test and see how it performs. All right, on Amazon, it has a 4.6 star rating in Amazon's choice. You know what I think about that? I don't think anything about it because I don't trust Amazon ratings. Oh, great. Look who's coming now. Well, now hold on there, partner. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. I just have one thing to say here. Now, I have seen with my own eyes people on Amazon creating videos reviewing this product who like it. Now, what you got to say about that? Now, these are Amazon affiliates. They're creating videos to convince people to buy the product so that they can make a commission on it. That's not the most unbiased review out there. Now, you, you do make a pretty good point there. Uh, forget I said anything. Pardon me, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to go out back. That's, that's what I thought to get out of here. All right. 
Now the Amazon listing states it can be used as a pot or a skillet for things like chicken, steak, rice, or eggs. Now if you recall, the lowest setting was 450 degrees, which is way too hot for eggs. If you think that sounds like a recipe for disaster, you're right. But I usually use eggs for my first test of a nonstick surface. I wanted to try it out, and here's how that went. For my first test, I really want to try out the nonstick surface, so let's try the most obvious choice. An egg with no oil or butter. I've already got this on low, it's already preheated. Let's put it in there and see what happens. All right, this will be a good test of this nonstick surface. Now I am making a sandwich and I need this broken. So I know some people hate that, but that's what I'm doing. My first observation is it's kind of off to the side and it's already kind of hot. I only have two settings, it's on low, but it seems like the edges are burning already. The nonstick surface is not bad, but it's so hot and it's uneven too. Everything's going off to one side. That's just, it's a total mess, total failure. See the, the one side that went in the center is burning, but the other edge is not even cooked. So I'm getting some, I'm getting, I'm having some problems here. This, this is not going so well. Terrible, not good. It's, it's, too, it's too hot. I don't have any other way to set this to lower temperature. This was a failure. I'm just gonna call this one and say this is a failure. I, I gotta go back to the drawing board in this one because this is, did not turn out so well. I smell it's like half of it's kind of burnt, the other half's kind of undercooked, so I'm, I gotta start over again. Just taking a look at the, at the pot itself, it is even. So the, the surface inside is, is not even, but the actual pot itself is. And the table, it's even. So the evenest problem is inside the pot itself, which I might have to try to compensate for that somehow. I should have known the 450 was gonna be way too hot to cook an egg, so that was an utter failure. I went on Amazon just now to see if there's any other comments and a lot of people were saying that even the low setting was too hot. One person said there's two settings, hot and way too hot. So I'm not alone in this, but let's try something that requires a little bit higher temperature and see how that goes. All right, let's try a simple hamburger and see how that goes. I've already warmed it up, but let's check it out. Normally I let burgers go about four minutes per side. Oh, we're getting kind of a nice sizzle in there. Oh yeah. So far, so good. Starting to smell the hamburger smells coming up. That's a good sign too. All right, we're, let's, we're at four minutes, let's flip it. All right, oh, we got smoke, woo -hoo. All right, we're at the eight minute mark. Let's see how it looks. I'm gonna turn this off. Uh, the handle's not too hot, by the way, so that's a good sign. Oh, it's looking pretty good, let's cut this open. All right, I would say it looks good. It's about as long as it would take if I did it on the regular stove. So uh, pretty good, actually. Let's take a little taste here, see what we got. All right, so it tasted fine. It took about as long as a regular skillet on my stove would have. So it worked pretty well for that one. So a real hamburger worked. Let's try a plant-based burger and see how that goes. Now this is a meatless hamburger here. Usually these cook up like a regular hamburger. So uh, we shall see about that. Well, so far so good. All right, so let's flip this after four minutes. We've got kind of nice sear on that side, so that, I mean, that looks pretty good. The high heat works, uh, works in this case. Didn't work for the egg, but it was, certainly works here. All right, this is about done here. Let's uh, take a look. There is the, the final result. Looks pretty good. So it seems like it works pretty well when it requires a high temperature. Low, not so much. I'm a little bit on the fence so far. I, I, it feels like low is too high, and I'm not even sure if it maintains an even temperature, and, and it doesn't sit evenly either. So I've got some initial concerns, but let's see how it goes moving forward. The fact that this gets so hot even on low kind of limits what I can test in here. Obviously, eggs are out. That's gonna be too hot for those. So let's try something like a nice grilled cheese sandwich and see how that goes. I've got it on low here and low seems to be hot enough. What I'm also curious about is when I did the thermal imager, there was kind of a C shape. So I'm wondering if I'm gonna get more burnt on this side and less on that side. So that's kind of what I'm looking out for for this one. All right, let's flip this and see what we got here. It's been about, about four minutes. Let's see what we got. Uh, the good news is that it's, it's more even than I thought it was gonna be, except for this one little edge right here didn't seem to get anything, which is kind of strange. That might've been up uh, where the, the cold spot is. I think it's certainly even enough to eat. So not, not too bad really. And the other side looks pretty good. I would say even enough, that's certainly edible. Do you guys cut your grilled cheese diagonal or, or parallel? I'm kind of a diagonal person. A nice gooey cheese, it looks pretty good. I think it did a pretty good job with this one. It came out perfect, so it's good for that at least. All right, let's keep moving on, shall we? Now their photos on Amazon show uh, some veggies. Let's try those. For this one, I'm gonna go on high. We're going 600 watts for this one. 
it's a bit tight in here. This is not a very big, uh, very big pot for this kind of thing, but I'm gonna try anyways. I find that the flat spoon isn't really working so well because I have such little room because it's so small and I probably overfilled it a little bit. So I went to a deeper plastic spoon and that seems to be working a little bit better. I mean, it's not exactly like using a wok, but I guess you could do it in a pinch. It doesn't really hold a great deal of, of food, but enough for one, maybe two people. All right, so I, I would, it definitely works. It, it's, it's, it's working. It's, it's probably not the ideal choice for making veggies, but it does work. Now the Amazon page states, if you are planning a trip or picnic, this portable pot will be your best companion on the go. Now that's assuming you have a power source, but I have a special segment in order to test that out. All right, it's time for some outdoor cooking in this segment I call Backyard Bites. I don't know why I use that voice, it just sounds appropriate. And instead of this being a palm tree, let's say that it's just a, uh, a flat leaf pine tree in this campsite. And instead of the traffic in the background, Let's just pretend like that's some the nearby wildlife and waterfalls. I got a steak that's been uh, sitting out, it's almost room temperature. Let's fire it up. Now they say you can use this for picnics, but what about the power source? Fortunately, I've got one. I've got my rock pal, but this is only 500 watts. So I can't go high on this, but, uh, but fortunately the low is off, it went to 450 degrees. So I think we can get away with it. Just doing low on this with my, with my 500 watt rock pals. Uh, let's check it out and see what happens. All right, so I've got a preheating here. I'm, I'm set at 250. I'm going to my rock pals here, which only goes to 500 watts, so I gotta stay on low. But right now it looks like it's pulling about 294 watts on low. So, uh, and I've got a wild coyote. It's coming into my campsite, looking to hightail it off with my fixins. Looks like she brought one of her youngins with her too. This is not for you, Bailey. All right, it's preheated, let's go. Here we go. Uh, nice sizzle, nice sizzle. It kind of barely fits in there, but I guess we'll have to make do with it. Looks like most of us touching the surface, so that's good. All right, let's try uh, flipping this over, see what we got. Oh, nice, very nice. That coyote's back trying to hightail it off with my fixins. But we have a nice sear here. For as small as this pot is, actually it doesn't look too bad. I'll be curious how this looks when it's all done. Bailey. So far my rock pals is holding up. We're about seven minutes in, let's see what we got on the, on the rock pals. Looks like I've used about 14% and it's still, it's, it's pushing a little over 300 watts right now. Consistently around in the 130 to 135 range. There you go, let this rest and see what happens. Rock Pals is at 76%, so we still have plenty of juice left. All right, here we go. I can't say I'm real confident how even this is gonna be because it was kind of uneven to other things as well, but let's cut into it and see how the steak turned out. Here we go. And, oh, not too bad, not too bad. Let me cut another, another section out here. Uh, still pretty good. So I, honestly, it's not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. I was kind of worried it was gonna be bad. It's not bad. All right, so it, it did work. It did work. And the first edition of Backyard Bites has been concluded. Speaking of bites, let's take a bite and see how it turned out. Here we go. Well, that came out pretty good. All right, well, it actually turned out quite well. I was worried it was gonna be bad, it wasn't. So you can do a steak in there. It might take a little bit longer than, than other methods, but it does work. Let's take a look at some of the pros and cons here. As far as the pros go, I really like the nonstick surface. It's pretty good. The outer surface doesn't get too hot. It heats very fast and it's good for foods that can handle really high heat. It cleans up pretty well, but you really can't submerge the entire thing in water, so you have to kind of work around that. Now, as far as the cons go, to me the biggest con is that even low, it gets too hot. They don't have a medium setting. The surface is way too hot for things like eggs. It's also a bit uneven, which something like a stew won't matter, but as you saw with the eggs, it can. Overall, I would say it's not perfect. It's not good for foods that require low heat, but for everything else, it actually worked pretty well. But that's all I've got. If you've tried this product or something like it, tell me what you think in the comments below. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time. Sorry, Bailey.